This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Sean Preston. Welcome to the Good Neighbor Podcast. Uh, today we have another good neighbor on with us, and that is Stephanie Sawabe of Sawabe Group Realty. How are you today? Hi, great. Thank you, Sean, for having me today. This is awesome. Super excited to have you on. I very rarely get an opportunity to uh, for a new guest because we never met before. <laughs> have a little conversation beforehand when I called you there. So yeah, uh, that only fed my curiosity for the record. Uh, so really happy to have you on and excited to dive right into it. But before we do, uh, what went down last weekend? Any fun plans? How's the summer been? So oh my gosh, what went down last weekend? My husband and I have two kids and we got to escape to Vegas. We just got back yesterday. Wow. <laughs> so in the middle of summer, we escaped. Don't worry, the kids were the kids were fine. They were handled, but we were good too. We had a good time. We were just actually went to a conference, um, an, an innovative conference in, in Vegas, learning all about future and healthcare and finance, things, how, how things are going to be changing and evolving over the next few years. And it was really eye opening, but it was fun being there without the kids. We missed them a little bit, but not so, so much. <laughs> if parents are listening to this, they get it. They understand what it's like midsummer with kids after you've been home with them for 60 days. And then you came back to this freezing cold. I would imagine it was yeah. super hot down there. Did you guys survive the heat? It was actually beautiful. It was it was very warm, but it's humid weather down there, right? So different from like Florida weather where we spend a lot, a lot of our time in Florida too, but very different. It's it's a lot more humid and dry, but we, you know, when you're in Vegas, you kind of walk through the hotels and then you have time to walk outside. So a lot of your time is spent inside. Um, but yeah, it was really shocking coming back here yesterday and being in the cold from being in the heat, in the hot weather for a few days. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was really interesting jumping back off that plane, being like, why did we come back? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It a little longer. This is the first time uh, since early spring that I actually have a sweater on in my own home really? doing my job. Yeah, it. Uh, I turned the uh, I turned the air off. I mean, like, yeah, so me too. It. It's absolutely freezing outside. It's scary because you're not really ready to think about winter. So Late true. In August, you know, you, you're kind of hanging on to everything else. And then Mother Nature just, you know, does a little <laughs> trick in front of you. And she's like, hey, guess what's happening? Right? <laughs> and like, Spirit oh. Halloween has it figured out too, right? Because Spirit Halloween has been opening up their stores out here in like Barrie, Simcoe County over the last couple of weeks. So I feel like they knew that the weather was going to cool off. They're like, we're going to get these people in the mindset of shopping for fall and Halloween, right? Right in the middle of our summer. Uh, it's good marketing right there. Totally. So while the audience has now been starved at wanting to know what you do for a living, why don't we dive right into that and yes. talk a little bit about your business? Sure. Yeah. So again, my name is Stephanie. I am a full-time broker in a, in a realtor in the Simcoe County area. I have a team as a founding uh, team owner of the Suave Group. And whether you're transitioning from the hustle and bustle of the city uh, which is where my husband came from, and we were we were in York Region for many years. To transitioning into this into Simcoe County and areas like Midhurst with expansive country properties, my team and I help families in the biggest transition of their life, which is making their move. And I am the creator of the Make Your Move method, which helps families basically leave an area where they were feeling in lack in a, in a home that no longer serves them and, and then moving them into properties where they can build massive legacies and uh, throughout their transitions of their chapters of their life we are there to support them through the make your move method to make their next big move and uh, that's something I can relate to too right because my family and I have also done that and we've also been able to support 115 families now over the last six years and making their big moves too so I'm really grateful to be here and also be part of the community and meet other families. And everybody has a story, I feel. Everybody that lives in Midhurst or in Simcoe County, a lot of people were necessarily from here and have had a story as to why they've, they've moved into these communities. And so I love being part of that story for people and help drive and, and build that momentum to get them to where they want to be. So I've got a funny story for you that goes hand in hand with what you're saying and how everybody's got a story, right? Mm -hmm. My 
I'll call my future brother-in-law. They haven't tied the knot yet, but I'm pretty sure that one's going the distance. We are pretty tight, uh, very tight. And <clears throat> he works in Brampton, he's an automotive mechanic and uh, got a great job, all of that stuff. Been living in Newmarket for a super, mm -hmm. super long time. And just recently, my sister finally won the battle with him to get him to move uh, to pretty wow. much spring water, like edge of spring water wow. right, right there, yeah. right? Big move. So we help them in the transition, do the move. They're all settled in now. And every time I go over to his house, he, he keeps saying the same thing over because, man, it's it's so quiet here. Quiet I here. love it here. I'll never go back. Right? <laughs> It's so, so true, right? So true, right? You don't hear the sirens as much. That was the biggest thing for my husband Steve when he moved because he lived in Scarborough his whole life, and I grew up in Ajax before moving to Newmarket. And so the biggest thing for us, even at that time, moving up to Newmarket Aurora, was the sounds, and then moving from Aurora Newmarket, which is now basically a city, up here. Again, it's kind of like that shock at first, right? Because you don't really hear very many sirens, but it's nice. You hear leaves and kids instead so that's great yeah it is a unique bubble up here mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't there's a lot of things especially in uh, barrett say midhurst spring mm -hmm. water horseshoe valley <clears throat> not there's there's a different type of culture here a lot of people that are newer i always like to you know pick their brain and ask them usually they, they give me a nugget which reaffirms why i'm here as well and they always say but people are just so nicer up here mm -hmm. you get that a lot I do. I actually, I posted a reel on my social media and I had tons of people reshare it about where we live now. And the reel was my kids in their little truck with their buddies from the street. And my kids, my, my son's eight, my daughter's six. Okay. Love it. So I said, this is what it's like when you raise your kids, like it's 1990s again. And it was a video of my kids in their little Jeep, like with their hands up in the air, they got a hockey stick in one hand, they're running around on the street. There's no, <laughs> cars interrupting their you know their little track that they made and they're kicking around a ball and then you've got them playing road hockey and then you've got my son you know hitting his baseball bat he's got like 50 sports that he's playing in this quick 30 second clip on my on my reel and I had so many people send me messages after that asking where do you guys live again like where where is this that you guys can live so freely and have your kids playing all over the roads there's where where is this I want to raise my kids like it's 1991 again you know and so I think that's the biggest thing, like for families moving up here, especially ours with a young family, it's very freeing to be in a community. This is a hidden gem here. I feel Midhurst is like a hidden gem spring water, right? A lot of places in spring water where we are in Midhurst specifically is like a hidden gem because you can, you can raise your family freely and it's not to be, you can't say that about many places right now. Right. So we are really grateful for the, for the opportunity to have found this little village here. Yeah, my parent, parents live in Midhurst as well. So very, very familiar with, uh, with that neighborhood and that, that community that's there. So let's talk about being a realtor. Mm -hmm. I've had the opportunity to speak with a few on the show yeah. uh, so far. And what, what's important for me is uh, I try to think of the audience and, and saying, okay, well, what what's the difference? Everybody most of the time says the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what would you say that makes you maybe a little bit different from, you know, the run of the mill pack when it comes to realtors out there? Definitely. And I, I really appreciate the realtor community. I want to start by saying that too, because as a team leader and, and uh, someone in the leadership space with the brokerage that I'm part of, part of my role is to help other agents thrive as well. So part of the role that I've taken on with the brokerage that I'm part of, which is real brokerage, is to come from a place of collaboration and and work together. And I truly feel like, you know, it, takes, it says it takes an army to raise a family. I think it takes an army to also help families make their moves. And so I really come from a place of collaboration and working together with my realtor partners. Um, for myself specifically, from the beginning, I've, I've helped coach other agents build their businesses as well. So from a place of realtors perspective, uh, I love to work in in collaboration with other agents to help see them win too, right? Because when they're winning, we're all winning, right? If there's, if, if we can create a beautiful space, that's the only thing about real estate. Sometimes I find it gets a bit of a wrath because like you said, you know, there's one agent competing for the same business with someone else where I look at it more of a, as a collaborative space. I help other agents build their businesses as well. I come from an entrepreneurial background. So for me, I grew up in a family business where 
We owned and operated multiple restaurants. I was in charge of running teams, building businesses from the ground up. And so when I joined this space, for me, it was about how do we all win? How do we make this a win-win and, and, and come from a place of service? And so when I when I'm serving a family, I serve this, my, my community the same way. It's not just serving families. And I think that's what makes myself and my team a little bit different is that we're collaborating with agents from Toronto. Uh, I was with agents this weekend from Thunder Bay out into Edmonton, Alberta. I'm at conferences with people from Florida because I, I'm also very affiliated with the Florida market. So for me as a connector, I believe in the power of, of working together in collaboration with one another. And I believe that that serves my clients at the highest and best value because when they're working with me, they're be also exposed to the culture that I've created with the collaborative environment that I've, that I've built around me, um, not just for, for my specific team, but for multiple teams. And, you know, like yesterday I was at a, a simple mastermind with, and I was sitting at a table with multiple agents from different companies, but that all live in, in Simcoe County from Innisfil, Barrie, Springwater, uh, Aurelia, and we were able to sit together and collaborate about the opportunities that we have coming up on the market, homes that we have coming up that maybe aren't on market yet. We were collaborating, conversing, asking if anybody knows a great family that's fit for this specific home. And so that's that's what I believe is, is there's power in the masses. And so I feel that that is what distinguishes me um, from maybe other agents who aren't seeing the opportunity from this lens. And so um, whether it's working specifically with a family or partnering with other brokers and other agents, mortgage professionals, insurance brokers in the industry, I'm, I'm looking to sit at a table with people who want to work together. And, and I believe that that's how we serve our, our neighbors our, our, our the communities that we're in is when we're all, we're all in it working for the same, in the same direction. Right. So, um, and I'm grateful because it, it doesn't have to be a small po pocket that I serve, right? It's it's looking to partner with the right people to build trust in our community, and and that's that's why we're doing what we're doing, right? And it's 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 working, it's working, and and I'm grateful because we get in the right rooms with the right people, and uh, our clients benefit from these relationships too. There are some times in life when you come across uh, somebody that you never knew was going to walk into your life. Yeah that you become really good friends with. You are yeah. saying some things that I say in my vocabulary on mm -hmm. a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I agree with everything that you're saying. Collaboration happens at the top, competition yes. at the bottom. Absolutely. Uh, when you are the uh, bigger person and you're able to see the bigger picture, yeah. uh, that's typically what people will say, like you just said right there. Mm -hmm. Very well said. And you touched a little bit on some of that journey on how you got to doing what you do yeah. today, which is my next question for you. Why don't you share with the listeners sure. how you got into becoming a, a real estate agent and that journey leading up to today? Yeah, it's a really kind of cool journey, similar to many people who have a story of where they were before they, what, what basically what's led you to where you are right now. And so for myself, at a very young age, my family decided to make their big move from a busy neighborhood into what was then the suburbs of Newmarket in 1996. And we decided to open up a restaurant. And it was a diner in Newmarket, a very successful diner on Main and Davis, Wimpy's Diner. And um, they opened up a location in Newmarket. They were given the, my family was given the opportunity to start over, right? To start fresh, to go from living in lack to building a beautiful legacy. And I'm really grateful that they took the leap of faith. And that's often the leap of faith that I talk about in my business when I'm helping families make their move from where they are to moving out in, in the direction that we we all live, all of our listeners here. And so and at that time, it was I was involved in the restaurant business for 23 years of my life. I grew up peeling potatoes in the back. I was in the dish pit for many years. I mm -hmm. have bust many tables. I helped my mom clean tables really fast. The faster we could turn over a table, the more money we'd make. So that was the energy and the environment that I grew up in from the age of eight. Um, and my brother at the time too, he was involved in the family business. And then it ultimately became all of us were involved in it from my aunt and my uncle to their children, to, to, my, to my mother and my father and my grandparents. And every, it was a family orchestrated business. My grandmother's sisters also owned Wimpy's Diner locations in Thornhill and in Aurora. Uh, we ended up opening up another location in Orangeville. And so growing up, I was part of a team, right? I had to learn to get along with my family members, which wasn't always easy. 
uh, especially in a high paced diner environment, as you know, when people are coming in and you're busy and you're just so focused on getting the food out. What I learned the most was the type of community that we got to build. Uh, and, and we were really an anchor location at Maine and Davis at the time um, for many people to come when they were hungover, when they were celebrating a birthday, when they were enjoying their time out uh, from, you know, on a date or whatever. And we got to really meet people in the new market community. And we were there for a very long time. The rate of restaurants succeeding for that long is rare, right? We were in business for 23 years, so a really long time in business. And so that's the that's kind of where I started out. And I was around uh, building businesses for a long time. I helped train startup locations. I helped with team building. I helped with the managerial side to the serving side to being frontline. And then that led me into working for Enbridge Gas for five years as a team leader. I had the skills to start in the dispatch in dispatch of Enbridge Gas, which I was taking emergency calls for gas leaks in the city. And it, I quickly moved up into the team leader role where I had union and non-union staff, just over 30 union and non-union staff working together with me um, in the operations area of installations of, of gas and services, which was very different from the, the restaurant business. But I needed a job that would allow me the opportunity to build my credit and to, to be able to apply for mortgages, et cetera. And so anyway, I, my, I purchased my first investment property at the age of 19, at the same time became a landlord very quickly. I didn't move into the property. I became a landlord quickly, had my first tenant by the age of 20 years old. And that's what led me into the real estate space was purchasing my first property. I recognized that as a server originally, we didn't really have a pension. We didn't, you know, as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a young entrepreneur, being in the, in the restaurant business, we were responsible for creating our own legacy because we didn't have a cushy job to help us. And then when I got into the corporate space, it's like, OK, the money is OK, but the stability is here. So how can I have both? How can I have the financial growth, but also the stability? And so that's when I started investing in real estate. And so um, fast forward. Um, because I come from the entrepreneurial background, it was natural for me to want to build my own team. And I started out working with a brokerage. I helped with their coaching of new agents in my first couple of years. I was one of their top performers of the brokerage. I don't love using that word because many people use it, but um, I quickly scaled. Let's say, let's put it that way. And I quickly served many more families, but I served them in a different way. I was serving them from the restaurant space originally, and now I serve them in another part of their life. But a lot of the, a lot of the characteristics are similar, and and I believe in coming from a place of service. And so I took the skills that I learned from my my grandparents and my parents at a really young age of what it means to serve people, and brought that forward to my business now. And as a natural progression, we've grown year over year, um, continuing to mentor and train other business owners. And now I help families make their big moves too. And so real estate was a natural progression for me, given that I was investing from a young age and I wanted other people to know what the power was of doing the same. Yeah. Some transferable, uh, skills there. No doubt. Uh, I yeah. <laughs> run in, I guess, maybe I wouldn't call it a run in, but I worked with Enbridge gas. Very I was cool. A manager for a company called Mueller. So they sold oh, yes. the machines and tools and the gas fittings uh, to drill into oh, cool. steel gas natural pipelines. So I met with the uh, with the top people with uh, Enbridge and Union and took a look at their all their equipment, made sure they had all that I could stuff. It was a relationship building kind of sales gig. And uh, so that uh, that's pretty funny. Um, you know, we had we we're in the same industry. Uh, that's so cool. One or the other. So. Super cool. There you are. See, we're are all connected any... somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's such a small world. Like it it's is. crazy. Uh, you know, we're we're uh, my fiance uh, is a business owner. She's uh, on the board of directors for the the, the chamber. I'm an ambassador for the chamber. Amazing. Here. And we, um, you know, we host our own networking events and we do so a lot good. of community kind of things. Remind me to talk to you about the Super Soaker event that we're hosting okay. uh, <laughs> this Saturday. Don't let me forget to tell you about that. Great. Uh, and and it's just, it's such a big world out there, but it's such a small world, you know, especially here in Simcoe County, you come across somebody and next thing later, you ended up crossing so paths at the same point in time or 
It's uh, so you both true. Know the same person and you're both, you know, equal yeah. know them, all this kind of stuff. It's wild. We all come with the story here. It goes back to kind of what we were saying in the beginning, right? We've all come through these into the same path with a story and it's it's really cool how they all interact with one another we're not as small of a town as we think you know like we're not as small as we think we are so that's pretty cool i love that it's like that big dog with the small dog mentality they just think they can be a lap dog and sit on you but they, they <laughs> exactly or my eight-year-old that still sits on my lap i'm like buddy you gotta go okay you're not eight months anymore you're a big guy now <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll regret that a little yeah, bit you get older. Right. I, I got a 18 year old and uh not uh not mine but uh inherited and uh, julie jokes around she was just joking around the other day about it she's like man when you were eight you used to sit on my lap no. and me. now you won't snuggle with me anymore so enjoy it while it lasts true <laughs> yeah you're right are there any like myths or misconceptions that you get in your line of work that you would share with the audience? I do. Oh my gosh, the settling. I was thinking about that yesterday on how we were, I was saying we came back from being away and we traveled with one carry-on, okay? One small carry-on with two two adults. Between, <laughs> one the, both carry -on. between the both of us. And wow. I know, right? And I think that's, that, come, that didn't obviously come as easy for us a few years ago when we were only traveling a little bit, but we travel a lot more now uh, between conferences and work. And we have, a, have some ties in the U S as well. So we're, we're traveling a lot. And the one misconception that comes with when working with myself and my team is people choosing to play small or choosing to settle in the same spot for the rest of their life. And there's this misconception of like, you know, you're given a property or a home, and you stay there for the rest of your life until it's fully paid off. And then at 65, you'll retire and then you'll maybe travel, maybe if you've made it and if you're healthy enough to do so. And so part of the work that I do with with my families that I'm serving uh, is to get them to see past the settling, past the staying in the same spot for, for the rest of their life if they choose. Um, we're here to connect them with another perspective of seeing the world in a different way. And our vision is, is for them to be able to rewrite their story. Our vision for them is to be able to rewrite some of the, the thoughts and limitations that were passed down to them from our parents who, yeah, they did, they did really well with, you know, they would work their one job. They, they would get paid well. They were able to purchase a home and they would wait to pay off that home. And that was it. Their job was done. And, and you know, they, they raised their kids there and then, Maybe you get that legacy passed down to you and then you've got a bunch of siblings who are fighting for one home and it's just silly. It's all silly, right? But part of what we're, what my husband and I's vision is and mission is, is to live right now, is to live in the now, is to, is to live while we're alive and while we're healthy. And so I help families reorganize their finance, their finances as well, in addition to, to organizing where they live and really roadmap out for them how we can do more with less, right? And how they can have their, what they desire and build the legacies and have multiple properties if they choose to and travel still and travel freely and live within their means. And so that's part of the reason why I love moving families into the Simcoe County region is because they can, they, they can have all of that, right? The properties out here are a lot less than what you'd find in, in busy neighborhoods like Toronto. They can invest their money. A lot of the equity that they're leaving with, if they've owned homes in York region or in Toronto, part of the money they can invest it and live pass on passive income and still have a home and still be able to pass down. Right. And so I think it, it, it the, part of the misconception when I'm working with families is that where they live right now is where they have to live for the rest of their life. And, and they're, and they're, they're at a point where, you know, they want to rewrite their story. They know that they, they have more desire. They'd like to take their kids on vacation. They'd like to be less strapped for cash they like to not just be working for one home the rest of their life. And so it's a different way to think. It's, it's, a, it's a different way um, to raise a family than what we're used to. But I really see this change taking place um, over the last five years. I feel like people are more open to having these discussions now and, and these misconceptions of, you know, you need to be happy with where you live and just stay where you are for the rest of your life is changing. People want more. People want more freedom, flexibility of their time, location, and money. And so uh, we're, we're here to show people another way because we've done it ourselves. 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. The landscape is <clears throat> constantly changing. It's changing at, at more of a rapid pace than it was when it first started back in the early 90s. The yes. digital age started kind of coming through. You know, I feel like it, you know, for those who are on video, like see my hand, it's going up on a, mm -hmm. on a high trajectory. Uh, that's how it's been for a super long time. And then everybody gets busy with all the tech that comes yes. out. They don't take a second to look back and say, yeah. you know, and then you see these things come back like uh, bell bottom jeans. So and true. <laughs> Stevie Nicks <Good> look, <laughs> right? Tie dye came back for a little bit. People want to hold books again print is yes. far from dead in yes. certain retrospects there's a lot to it and um and you're speaking speaking a lot of the truth so education is a big thing with that i mean people uh i think that's that's the power that's the power mm. uh because you don't know what you don't know and yes absolutely it, it got so complicated now you don't know what rabbit hole you're going on on the yeah. internet and you said it earlier i'm going to repeat it but that word trust is what governs the entire world Mm -hmm. You don't have trust yeah. in, in, in anything, whether that's buying a, 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 you know, a product or service. And in this case, I'll use that as an example, since, uh, it's you and, 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 and this podcast and platform, uh, it's an embodiment of what we're looking to try to do here is have yeah. good people on the show, mm -hmm. let them know behind the scenes, you know, this conversation, it, you're absolutely wonderful. Uh, you seem like you have a wonderful family, but not until I get the chance to talk to you. Absolutely. And then get to know you and be like, oh my God, she knows her shit and she's mm -hmm. really good at what she does uh, and, and et cetera, et cetera. You know, those things, when you're able to teach people something, they can learn not only about you, but about your expertise and, you know, hey, uh, you know what it's like to work in a team, yeah. you know what it's like to bring the service aspect. I mean, that's what most people want, especially mm -hmm. from a realtor. It's like, hey, treat me like a human being, take care of me, have a good level of communication. And uh, if that trust is uh, is built, then not only are they going to buy from you, but they're also going to refer you to their friends that's and family it. members, which is that 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 allotment of of continued trust, right? I love that too. Like to your point too, talking about trust, it's, it's coming from a place of recognizing that we're in this for, for the person that we're serving as well. Right. So when we talk about service, we kind of do have to remove our own needs for the, for the meantime. Right. So when we're, when we're serving our community, like you, Sean, here with this amazing podcast, you have, you're highlighting the person first, right. Instead of highlighting your accomplishments or, or your needs first. Right. So you're, you're, it's, it is building trust in myself being open enough to have this conversation with you and other listeners on the podcast that are listening to have an opportunity to hear because someone goes first. Right. And so that's how we build trust as well as by, as by modeling what we've also done already. Right. We we're here to, to sometimes it does take the courageous step in, in a team or someone that, you know, a neighbor, someone that you see going before you to take the first leap of faith and to take the first step. And that's how we ultimately build trust is through these experiences. And so when we're sitting, working with a family or when we're, when we're out on appointments, we're looking at it from their lens first versus what's in it for us. If the product or service that I have is not going to benefit them and I'm coming from the wrong place, the wrong intention to start, it, it leads to disaster, right? So the last thing I want is someone to just upsell me or upsell me the next opportunity or tell me what I need to do instead of modeling for me why, right? Or or what, what, what are the other options I have, right? Looking at the entire sphere, the entire lifestyle, the entire experience versus just seeing this one symptom of the big picture, right? So we look to to help people with their entire vision and the entire picture and not we're not just serving them from one place or another we're getting to know their family we're getting to know who they are what are their needs what are their desires where do they see themselves and looking big picture and then modeling for them experiences that support their needs and desires right so uh, that's how i believe we build trust too is is leveraging those of us in our communities to show examples of others who have done it before them but ultimately, you know, I was thinking about that over this weekend when we talked about innovation and and things that are going to be new. And not everybody trusts new innovation, but it takes someone going first to try before others are willing to watch and learn and listen. So, yeah. We can speak to that, Jeff and I, and what we're doing in our organization. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do because if it was, anybody would do it. Uh, but to go back to, you know, what you were saying especially if somebody's 
hasn't done it in a while yeah. or is, they haven't done it at all, you know, that's where that, that, that trust can be built, that expertise and saying, well, mm. yeah, hold my hand and obviously getting to know them and getting to know the full circle, right? Mm. Like you're saying is really important, but you know, I'm, I'm putting together something right now. I've never done it before. I'm, I got a professional helping me and it's like, Hey, hold my hand. Yeah. Guide me along the way and explain to me why. Like, don't just exactly you know, tell me what to do or do it for me. Like, explain how does the process work? Mm -hmm. I want to learn. Uh, and I know not everybody is is like that, but I think most people are. You know, the more that you can learn, if you're a constant life learner, and the better off mm -hmm. you're going to be throughout the course of your life, help you make better decisions, help you be a better human being. And that's kind of what we want, right? We want the you're world right. to be. I don't think a lot of people are happy with the world the way it is right now. Of course. I think a lot of people like the way it was before when the times yeah. were more simple. So, hey, why don't we, yes. you know, take a page out of this playbook? Why don't we continually to learn? But uh, to your point, it's 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 professionals like yourself, like myself. It's 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 those people and their jobs to hold people's hands and teach them and move them forward in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. Well said, Sean. I agree. So you seem like you like to have fun when you're yes. and I got a little <laughs> glimpse of it. You know, you're saying hockey sticks and yeah, we've got it know, all going on over here. I got jealous. Vegas, hockey sticks. When you, what else do we need? <laughs> when, yeah, when you said they were driving those little car, I never got to do that when I was a kid. I'm 35 yeah. years old, but I feel like I'm yeah. 14 on most days. Uh, but uh, you know, people are busy. Uh, when, when you're a business owner, when you're managing a team, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of days, there's a lot of hours that go into it. This isn't a nine to five thing. I think yes, most true. Who, 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 who read and watch our platforms, business owners, they already know this. And if you're not one, um, you know, hey, this is something, again, maybe to learn. Um, and so that limited time, it's not a balance, it's a harmony. It's you got to so find true. that symphony, that right tune that works well for you. Everybody's different. But when you're not working on your business or working mm -hmm. in your business, what do you like to do for fun? What does Stephanie like to do for fun? What does Stephanie and Steve like to do for fun? So fun. I love this so much. I feel like it's, it's fun. It, you have to have fun. You know, it's fun to have fun. Like we need to have fun to build, to, to bring out the vibration, to be able to serve people, to be able to, to do all the things that we do, raise a family, have two kids, um, be there for one another. And what do we like to do for fun? There's so much. Oh my gosh. Uh, I uh, honestly, I really love going to my son Joseph's baseball games. I really do. I never thought that I'd be a baseball mom. Like now thinking about it, I'm like, everybody, I thought baseball was so boring. But when I see him, like last night, I saw him show up to his base and he was like so stoked and ready. And he's like, Pat down his baseball bat and he's like just ready to swing and I'm like let's go Joseph like I was amped I'm like I was screaming this is a freaking house league where are you going this is house league calm down okay I'm like that mom if you see me in Barry and I've got you know my daughter Mila with me waiting for my husband to trade spots because he comes in and relieves me so I can go to my appointments so I see the beginning part of the baseball game I am ramped up there okay I'm like playing little John for him on the way I'm paying I'm playing like our old school R&B like hip-hop for this kid he's like mom like I'm embarrassed put the windows up you know so when I'm that mom like I feel like I'm going to like the, the the baseball association of I don't know where so and he's only eight okay he's not even in selector rep imagine when that happens but <laughs> I'm like all in it okay that is fun for me I love that and I honestly there's um elite dance works my daughter's part of a, a dance work company here in Barrie many people who are, who are listening probably heard of them but I love seeing her I love getting her dressed up and ready for her recitals and like getting her you know ready for show and for stage um I love production so I, I love like understanding how actors work their magic and production and behind the scenes. I love, that's probably one of the biggest parts that I love about my business too. So like understanding how marketing works, I'm kind of a nerd that way where I'll, I'll watch videos of how people are, are acting behind the scenes. And so we do that a little bit in our business as well when we're, when we're working on real estate listings, et cetera, and, and, and showcasing the home. Um, what else do I love to do? So I love showing up for Joseph's baseball and getting him embarrassed, Mila and her dance, getting her excited. Uh, I read a lot. I, I do. I, I'm a big reader. I love to read. I love podcasts. I love going out on walks and runs, just putting in some, I love motivation, inspiration, innovation. Um, so I'm always listening to something. Um, 
I actually have joined Namaste North. It's a yoga studio in Barrie, and I've been part of that, part of their team, part of their, one of their clients for a very long time since I moved here and love going there for fun. Um, their Pilates classes are super fun. Uh, Debbie's, Zach, some of the trainers that are, that are part of their team play the, have the best playlist. So it's super fun class. You get a good workout and get a good sweat and you leave feeling like a superhero. So I love that feeling. Nice. Um, I love to dance. We take mini vacations often. My husband and I, I have a, a amazing family that helps me with my kiddos when we're traveling. Uh, we were just in Vegas. We do weekend trips to Florida here and there. So I really, I love travel. Traveling for me is, is a non-negotiable, which is why we've been able to position ourselves financially to be able to travel more. And I'd like to do more of that in the near future with my kids, not that they're getting bigger and I don't have the baby bottles and the, the yeah. diapers to worry about. Right. So that's kind of cool. So we're at a cool stage now with our kids where we can travel with them more. Uh, but fun is a non-negotiable in our family. We try to find a way to have fun all the time. We created a mini living room dance floor on the weekend. So if you've watched my stories on Instagram, you'll see some of those highlights sometimes. They're a lot of fun. We like to have a good time around here. Nice. Yeah. It. Uh, I like to say I'm a pretty good judge of character. If I have a superpower, it'd probably be that, I think. <laughs> I can tell right away when I'm she's cool or yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not touching that person with a 10 foot pole. I don't know. Body that's language, funny. whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe that's the street smarts in me, but uh, there you go. I love uh, that. I definitely lots, uh, lots in common there uh, from that perspective. Uh, I got very fortunate at meeting the female version of me, so like good. to the T, you know, usually there's like a couple things when people say that. Yeah. Like, no joke. Like exactly the same just the anatomy is different it's pretty wild so we like going you know camping we like uh or pretty adventurous uh starting to get uh her back into the travel uh i've traveled from with work and i've i've been on a couple of um on the pleasure side of things like i've been to rome it's the only place i've been across the pond but Amazing. i got uh, best friends that live in florida so fun uh, I've got five of them down there they just came up and then jeff uh, my partner jeff and then i've got one other best friend we just went to a cottage on the weekend and so fun. Uh, that's why i proposed to julie it was last no friday so, you're kidding yeah. me <laughs> oh wow, this is awesome well, that's all so super fresh, <laughs> fresh news off the press yeah. here we go word's gonna awesome. spread now I was at my parents <laughs> in Midhurst yesterday wow. and um, he opened up a bottle of Camus and we were having some, some pretty sweet wine. And, uh, and then we just sat on the couch and then just called. We're, we're, I was born in Winnipeg. Most mm. of my family relatives are, are there. I've got one uncle. He's, he's out in Quebec, but all the rest of them, they ended up sticking around there. So we were FaceTiming people last night, just kind of sharing. That's the amazing. The <laughs> Congrats, man. That's huge. That's so fun. So yeah, well, are you guys when you like to do, Yeah. Uh, well, we're thinking of um it's not set in stone yet, but maybe think of doing something where we have like a little, you know, gathering. We saw yeah. a lot of people that would have to fly in from Winnipeg. Right. From different different parts, but you know, wouldn't be anything big and then do a destination wedding, or we just, you know, do a 250 person wedding and just rock and roll that's it that's all you need you know so Perfect. we're 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 deciding on what what's the best course of action i'm trying to convince her to take like a three-week honeymoon so i'm still yes that, but... <laughs> yes you totally should you would never forget that like yeah. that would be that would be epic and your yeah, son but... too right you're he was 18 right so uh chanel is our daughter she's uh she's 18 she just turned 18 like two that's right ago um she's a she's a good kid i got no no complaints there she's making making being a dad pretty pretty I easy. love that yeah. that's so good yeah you've taken on a big role but it's so beautiful to see what they offer back right how our kids can offer what we give to them back to us in so many measures and to see you guys now starting your family together like this all solidifies everything for you you know yeah i'm gonna get a babysitter personal driver it's gonna be beautiful Let's go. There you go. Perfect age. Perfect age. 18. Yeah, right? I have 10 more years. <laughs> I always tease her. I always tease her. 
uh, on that stuff, right? She's like, no, I already grew up babysitting. I'm like, it's just starting. You just started your job, okay? That's so good. Very cool. Well, in life, we oh, we pick a path, right? We decide yeah. this is the path for me and we walk that path and that path is the path of life. And as we go down that over time, life gets in the way. It throws, mm -hmm. uh, it's never easy. Life is not easy. There's like challenges that happen. Sometimes tragedies happen. Uh, it's like, it's, it seems like it's like the Mazda commercial, like zoom, zoom, you're just left, right, up and down. And so, for some people, it's just, it's straight and narrow. It's a little bit easier for some over others. Uh, but what's really fascinated me about human beings is our ability to be able to look at the glass half full. Mm -hmm. How do we move forward from these things? Because we don't really have a choice. It's life. We have to, uh, you know, select few give up, unfortunately, but... Uh, for the majority of us, we we want to carry that forward. And there's there's ways about going and doing that. Um, and a lot of life lessons, a lot of how we grow is that uncomfortability component to it. But finding that silver lining, finding that, you know, looking at the glass half full, that mindset component yeah. to it, I feel is the, is the key, uh, key here. And so I like incorporating a little bit of that at the end of our next question, which is, you know, describe to us a, you know, a life challenge. Have you been through a hardship uh, in your life that you, maybe you overcame it, uh, maybe it made you better, maybe it made you stronger, maybe you took some silver linings from it? Yeah, there's so many. Um, I'm thinking about a time when my son Joseph was born. I gave birth to him. I was pretty young when I had him. Uh, t not very young, but I was 25, you know, and in the middle of a transitional career change. And my husband was as well. So my husband and I both come from very humble beginnings. My husband grew up um, in a, a community where, you know, he had a lot of friends, tons of friends, but they grew up in a, in a building complex. And so he was the first person to start building wealth through real estate in his entire family, first person in his entire lineage to purchase a home in Canada. So um, started off with very humble beginnings and myself as well. I'll never forget, we started off with like two garbage bags of clothes when we were moving into our first home. And I'm sure many people can relate to the story. Humble, very, very humble beginnings. And we're basically the first generation to create change, financial change for our families. We come from families that are very hard workers, but they didn't make the best financial decisions when it came to leaving the states and generational wealth. Okay, so my husband and I, it was one of the toughest times I remember uh, a time of real resilience building was, you know, being a mom for the first time, having this little boy now, you know, I'm, I'm no longer in the corporate cushy job that I was at at Enbridge Gas. I decided to take a complete leave. And, you know, my husband is also going th through a career change. He used to be in the glass industry. So he used to make like glass tables and work for his uncle at a glass company in Scarborough. So mediocre pay but not enough to get by in the generation that we're in now with a young child at home and a home and bills etc and, and really wanting to change our direction and our financial direction in our life and knowing that we really didn't have he didn't have a big backup behind him to really support him and so for him and I it was a tough period of our life because we just got married now we're paying our debts from now we're talking about weddings. We were just on that topic, Sean, but like, you know, we come out of like this big wedding, come out of being in school. Now we're on leaves of absences. He's now decided that he's going to go forward with a new career. So he went from being a glass installer to going to study to become a crane operator. So we knew that, you know, yeah, times are really tough right now. Yes. You know, he took a, a, a leave of absence to went on EI, had to study, um, I was trying to take on jobs, you know, part-time just to make ends meet while he was on EI. I'm on EI. So we're both at this in this position now. We're raising our first child in this home, trying to make ends meet. We're like coupon shopping, trying to figure out where we can clip from so that we can make sure that we have enough for formula, diapers, our mortgage, his school, me trying to decide on what I'm going to be doing next in my career, because I knew working for a corporate company, I'd have to wake up at 5 a.m. and try to find daycare for my son at, at a year old and try to make it into the corporate world I was part of for 7, 7.30 a.m. That was our clock in time. Um, 
And I went through a, a really tough spot because here I am, a young mom, I'm trying to find my identity at the time, right? Like I'm trying to figure out who I am as well. You go through these hormonal changes as a mom and I'm like, do I go back to the workforce? How am I going to, I want to provide, right? I want to provide. It's very hard to get by with on one income. So I was taking jobs part-time here and there before I decided on really moving full steam ahead with my own business. And um, this is going back eight years ago. And to think of where I was, where we were at a really tough spot of like barely knowing if we we're going to make our mortgage payments to being in debt and then completely trans transforming our lives and what we've been able to do in under eight years as uh, my husband is first gen my son Joseph is first generation Canadian on my husband's side my husband was born in Europe his parents came here when they were in their 40s had uh, Steve was here my husband Steve came here at the age of eight from Macedonia so he grew up having to learn English while he was in elementary school ESL to now seeing what he's been able to do. And now he's a full fledged crane operator and I've started my own business and I'm leading a team and helping families make their moves. And, and I come from this vulnerable place to share this today that where you are right now is where you are, but it's, and it's so hard to see when you're in the miss in the messy middle or the muddy waters. Yeah. It's so hard to see past that. And you're looking up to other people thinking, well, they could do it because they, because of this or, and I can't, or they have this because of this or whatever, but like there, everyone has a story to tell. And it's like, at the time, what I, if I could tell myself what I'm looking back now, if I could tell myself one thing, it's just the, I didn't know how much resilience I was building in what I, the cards I was dealt in that moment to not having work at the time, to my husband going off on leave, to having our child very quickly to, you know, but the, the best thing that we did was we stayed the course, you know, we just stayed in the course and we got into rooms that made us feel very uncomfortable, right? I think getting into rooms with new other entrepreneurs or people who are 10 steps ahead of you, even when you feel like you don't belong, still get into those rooms. I think the, my one mentor at the time and getting a, having a mentor or a coach is huge, especially when you're, you can't pull yourself, yourself up out of waters. I feel like I for sure probably had some postpartum after giving birth. I didn't know that at the time, but I'm grateful for the mentors that I, that I chose to, to work with. And, um, that's why I love leadership so much is because it's been able to get me out of really messy times and messy waters when I didn't think that I was going to be able to swim. And the one mentor I had said to me, Steph, just focus on getting in the rooms. It's not going to require you a ton of money. It's not going to require a lot of skill. But when when you're associated around the people that you want to learn from, that you want to build trust with, and you are and you say yes to opportunities, like the one I did today with you, Sean, I didn't know what we were coming here to talk about, but I'm in the room with you right now, right? So I'm, I'm focused on being where my feet are right now, and I'm focused on the conversation I'm having with you, and grateful that you've been able to open the door for people to sit in the right rooms. And so... I think that was the biggest lesson that I learned at the time, really getting myself down and surrendering, being stripped of what I knew and the identity that I had before becoming a mom and starting my own family and, and the debt that we had at the time to now fast forward, seeing what we've been, we've been able to do with our story. And we're still getting in the rooms, right? Like we're not even close to where we want to be. But um, I think that's the best step that we took was to just get super uncomfortable and to say yes to something that was uncharted territory at the time saying yes to the new career saying yes to building the business saying yes to going back to school even as a parent when you want to provide and and you're like but I still got to go to work you know so yeah it's it, we've been we've been getting uncomfortable for a super long time and I feel like it feels normal now like looking back like now it's like if it's not uncomfortable it's not normal you know what I mean like you've just been uncomfortable for so long so <laughs> we're not we're still not comfortable you know but yeah that's the biggest thing we learned from it a lot there's i don't know i'm not going to put a like a i want to use the right word here so it's not a lot of people i'd say people there's mm. a good amount of people that are out there that they just don't know what you don't know mm. and that feeling of being uncomfortable as from a human nature perspective if it feels uncomfortable people don't like that so they shy away from that right they stay in their shell but how you grow as a human being is by being uncomfortable. It's like when I mm. first got my golf lessons, he put his hand, the golf instructor put his, put my hands around the golf club and he goes, yeah. that's how you hold a golf club. And I'm like, really? He goes, 
how does it feel? I'm like, it feels uncomfortable. He goes, good, you're doing it right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, that that growth, uh, I'd, I'd encourage anybody who's listening to the show, it, let, be in those rooms. Mm. It, it, there's nothing that anybody can't tell you what you can't do in your life. So true. And, and if you want to be in those rooms, other leaders will want to have you there. Yes. So good. Because so it's... Important. It's the people that want to learn. It's the people like me or you. I had people put me under their wing. I'm very thankful uh, for those people. Yeah. And I and now when we're in those positions, we have now we have bigger wings. And so we can put people under there. So good. But if you're not going to put yourself in a position to come under the wing, I can't mm. I can't help you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But uh no, very well said. Uh super, super cool what you've accomplished. Really excited. Uh, to eventually do this again so that we can check in with you okay. and see how things uh, have transformed for, for you guys. And of course, uh, everything that the kiddos are doing, <laughs> uh, hopefully, especially Joseph, yeah. an opportunity to get into rep. That would be awesome. We want to come out to one of those games. We would maybe sneak in beers if we can. That'd be phenomenal. That would be amazing. And, uh, and me watch them. the music on our way. <laughs> That's me. That's Steph. <laughs> Um, before I let you go, what is one thing that you wish our listeners knew about your business? Yeah, I, I wish that they knew how easy it was to work with us. We're, we're a lot of fun. We, we want to get families the results that they're looking for, but we want it to be a really good experience on the way. And so we're, I always, I love to say it. We're that type of team that will show up with you with our sneakers on and maybe a blazer, but we just want families to feel like they're at home with us. And so we want families to feel comfortable when they're reaching out and to know that we have a solution for most of the problems that they're probably facing right now. And if we don't, we, we know who has a solution um, for their need. And so I want the viewers that are listening today to know that I'm one of your neighbors. I'm not just a realtor or broker or team leader. I am a neighbor as well. And I want to get to know you just on a personal level and, and network with you and see what you do too. So um, I want the, the lines of communication to be super open with anybody that's listening here and not to feel nervous or scared to send me a DM on Instagram or just spark a conversation saying you heard this conversation today. If you see me wave to me, you know, just neighborly things, just being a good neighbor. So thank you for this opportunity, Sean. Very nice pun, Stephanie. I like that. Yes, that, that's right. Good to be a good neighbor on the Good Neighbor Podcast. Here we go. <laughs> oh, for those that don't know, I paid her to say that. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> very cool. And so definitely there are people that are interested. And for those who are and want to reach out to you, what's one of the best ways that they can go ahead and do that? Absolutely. So you can search our, our websites launched. It's in, we just did a huge revamp of our website. I'd love for you guys to check it out and let me know what you think. It's soavegroup.ca. So that's S O A V E group.ca. Or you can send me a message on Instagram and that handle is at the T H E Steph Soave. And I'm happy to chat with you there too. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. For coming on and doing this great conversation great person another great business and a good neighbor and looking forward to hopefully doing this down the line thank you for listening to the good neighbor podcast neighbors to nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show go to gmpmidhurst.com that's gmpmidhurst.com or call 705-413-3775